Hi, today we are gathered here, dearly beloved, for the marriage of two of my favorite desserts, pies and cakes. So if you like pies and cakes, you're automatically going to love what we're going to be making today. They are called ojos de pancha or ojos de buey, which translates to bull's eyes. And the reason why they're called this is because, as you will see, they look like the eyes of a bull. <laughs> Now, the origin of the ojos de buey isn't quite clear, but popular, popular belief has it that they were created by a Chinese immigrant who came to Mexico sometime during the, 19, uh, the late 19th century. In any case, uh, if you have made pan de muerto Yay! or conchas, I think I hear the ocean, you will be very, very relieved to know that this recipe is pretty straightforward and you will not be working out. You will feel like you worked out at the gym after you finish. <laughs> so, shall we commence? So for making the exterior rings, we are going to need one and a half cups of flour, one half cup of warm water, one fourth tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and 112 grams or one small stick of butter. Additionally, you're gonna need a bowl full of sugar in which we're gonna roll the rings in. And you're also gonna need a small bowl full of melted butter that we're gonna use to brush on the rings as we're making them, okay? Now, for the mantecado, for the inside, for what's inside of the ojo de buey, no? For the pupil of the bull, see, we're gonna need two cups of flour, you're gonna need three fourth cups of sugar, uh, one, you're gonna need one teaspoon of baking powder. Do not use baking soda, which is a mistake I have often made, and then you get bitter pancakes. Uh, make sure it's baking powder, uh, just one teaspoon of that. Um, just a pinch of salt and uh, one or two teaspoons of vanilla or almond extract or any other flavoring you'd like to use. Also, one half cup of vegetable oil, which is going to ensure that the inside of the cake is delicious and moist. We're going to have moist eyes, I guess. Um, and uh, also, one cup of milk and two eggs. So the first thing we're going to do is pour our flour onto our countertop. As you know, it's volcano time. Dig faster, dig faster! Let's make sure that your crater is big enough to hold all the water we're gonna pour in, as well as the butter. So I'm gonna put in the rest of my dry ingredients, my yeast, my salt, and my sugar in there. Next, I'm going to pour in my water. And now, I am going to start mixing this in. Now, I have to say that growing up, ojos de way were never really my go-to pan dulce when we'd go to the restaurant, mostly because they were usually overshadowed by the colorful conchas or the delicious campechanas. But I have to say that the first time I tried an ojo de pancha was really memorable. I was in downtown Juarez with my brothers and the lady there, the, one of the waitresses that was working there told us that they were the most sought after pan dulce at that cafeteria. And we ordered it and wow, I just remember tasting the crispy exterior followed by the ugh, the delicious delicious cake inside now at this point in making uh the rings you might start getting ptsd from the pan de muerto or the conchas because it looks super liquidy right don't worry we're gonna knead it up a little bit and it's going to be fine we're going to add in our butter we're going to start mixing it in. 
And once the ingredients start mixing in, go ahead and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. I have the assistance of my trusty bench scraper, which is gonna help me scrape off any flour that might be clinging to my countertop. Make sure you mix in all the flour so that it's all incorporated to the big ball of dough you're making. So I've been kneading for about five, seven minutes and the dough's already begun uh, to come together. It's really not as sticky as when I first started kneading. So look, isn't it beautiful? Anyway, what we're gonna do now with this is divide it into four little baby balls, okay? And later, we're gonna divide those four baby balls in two. So we're gonna end up with eight ojos de boy. I'm gonna put it on the counter and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it and cut this in four pieces. So, I'm just gonna cut this in quarters. So, that looks about right. And once we have our little quarters, I'm gonna put some flour on the counter because I'm gonna roll these into cuter little balls. Like this. I'm just gonna roll them around till we get little bolitas. This is actually called bolear. Create a little seam. Flip it around and just make sure we close those seams. So this guy seems to be ready. We're gonna put it to the side and now I'm gonna move on to the next one. Boleamos, boleamos. There we have the second one. Put it right here. We're just gonna do this with the remaining two. And after that, we're gonna give them a chance to take a nap. They've been working out hard, so they need to go to sleep for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna cover these with a bowl for about 10 minutes. We're just gonna chill, wait for them to relax. And after that, we're gonna start laminating, which is where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins. So now I have my four little bullseyes uh, ready to take their nap and I'm gonna cover them with a bowl. So I'm gonna cover it for about 10 minutes. We're just gonna let them rest and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, so it has been 10 minutes and now it's time to wake them up. Come on, wake up, guys. Oh, 10 more minutes, please. <laughs> All right, so the way this is gonna work, we're gonna roll them out two by two. So I'm gonna put these guys over to a side, and we're also gonna be using what is gonna feel like a ton of flour, like a truckload, a truckload of flour, but we need it because we wanna dry out this dough so that way it can be nice and crispy once it's baked. So I'm gonna put a bunch of flour over here and sprinkle some in the middle right here. And I'm gonna put these guys next to each other like this. And I'm just gonna start rolling them up like this. Now they might try to stick to your rolling pin. If that starts happening, grab a little bit of flour and just put some on the rolling pin, okay? And that should help with the sticking. So we're gonna roll these out till they're long. And, and they've thinned out a bit, right? So see, I'm having these stick a little bit. You just get some more flour, make sure you stretch it out. Okay, 
So this part of the process is called laminating, right? Because we're going to make several layers. Once you stretch them all out, we're going to cover this section. We're going to cover the top with flour like this. And we're going to fold it in from the top to the center, bottom to the center, bottom to the center, from the top to the center. Now we have two. Ah, they're sticking together. All right. So now we're going to actually fold these all the way. So now we're going to flip these to the side and we're actually going to do five of these turns. So that way we're going to have a total of five layers. Maybe we'll do six. We'll see. So now we're going to roll these out again. So satisfying to see them roll out. Part of me just wishes I could do this at a macro scale and have one of those things they use to pave the streets, you know, the what are they called? The steam steamrollers? And just like steamroll my way across a giant slab of dough. It's so satisfying. Alright, so now we're gonna fold these back in. This back in. This, this up, that way, this guy up, and then we're gonna flip. Now I'm noticing that I need a little more flour, so make sure you're checking, make, make sure you are checking your countertop to make sure that there's plenty of flour down there. Otherwise, the dough is gonna start sticking to the countertop. So I'm going to flip these sideways. So this is our second turn. Now I'm going to stretch these out again. Steamroller. All right. I'm going to fold from the top to the center, bottom to the center, bottom to the center, top to the center. This is our third turn. Let's roll them out again. You're going to notice that as you continue with the laminating process, it's going to start getting more and more firm, uh, which is a good thing because again, it's, we want to dry it up. Eventually they're going to be nice and dry and they're going to just frame that beautiful cake we're going to make for the center. These guys want to get in on the fun. Not yet, guys. You guys have to wait your turn. So I believe this is our fourth turn. Is it the fourth? We'll say it's the fourth. I've finished laminating. Uh, I believe in the end it was six folds. Uh, so the dough has six layers now, I think, or 12. I don't know, I'm a Spanish teacher, not math. If you are good at math, tell me the answer in the comments. All right, I have all four layers of my laminated delicious pastry. So what we're gonna do now is, with the help of a pizza cutter, cut straight down the center. I'm gonna use the help of my rolling pin. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna set these guys up here. I'm also going to make sure that I have straight-ish lines so that our layers come out evenly. So we have Nice little rectangles. Now for the next part, what we're going to do is heat up some butter and melt it completely because we're not, we are going to fold these so that they don't collapse while they're in the oven, okay? So let me heat some butter up and I'll see you in 20 seconds. 
a few moments later. In order for these not to collapse, we, have, we still have to fold them in. So I have some melted butter that I am going to brush on each one of these strips. And this is not only going to give it delicious flavor, but it's also going to, it's kind of going to be like glue for these next layers. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to fold the top part of the strip to the center like this. And then we're going to fold up the bottom half to the center like this. And voila, you have your first strip. We're going to turn these into rings in just a moment. If you have a little bit left over, that's fine. No pasa nada. All right, now I'm just going to do this with all of these strips and I'll see you in a second. Honestly, I think this is the hardest part of the recipe. And it's not even really that hard. It's almost like you're painting. Ooh, I feel like, I don't know. Frida Kahlo. Yes, it is I, Frida Kahlo. So I have closed these up. They kind of look like cool neckties, don't you think? Um, so they're all, now the next step that we're gonna do is turn these into hoops. Now to do that, you could use a cup or a glass or anything that's circular, right? So you can kind of get the ring shape, right? I have these baking rings that I am gonna use. And I also suggest that to close these, you use water, okay? The secret weapon. So we're just gonna roll it around the ring like this. It began with the forging of the great rings Whatever ring you're using, whatever cup you're using is either too big or in this case too small, you just wrap it around, okay? Now, once you wrap it around, I am going to dip my fingers in the water and I'm just gonna put some on the side that I'm gonna close and on the inside. So that way we can create a nice little seal. And right away you're gonna see that it gets pretty sticky, right? Which is what we want. So, I'm going to close the ring. Voila, ring number one complete. Now, we're going to do this for a few more times until we have all the rings ready. Okay? Now, where do we put these in the meanwhile? You can set them to the side. I'm going to start putting them on the baking tray I'm going to use. So ring one, you're going to be here for now. Okay. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Well, that is all eight of the rings. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're almost done with the rings. We just need to cover them with butter. So I have What's left of my melted butter. I might have to melt a little bit more because I'm starting to run low. And then we're going to run them through sugar. So this is a pretty straightforward process. So you're just going to butter it up. Like so. And then we're going to just roll it through the sugar. So the way I do it, I just roll it around like this, roll it around maybe a few times, so that way we can be sure that the whole thing is covered in sugar. So that's one. I'm also thinking that I'm probably gonna need more than one tray because these guys do expand a little bit in the, in the oven. So I'm probably going to use a second tray. Now, if this is your first time making them, or if this is your first time baking any type of Mexican sweet bread, enjoy the process, right? These aren't supposed to look perfect. These are homemade. Like I said, I wasn't even attracted to them when they were store made. Uh, but again, they are surprisingly good. They are now one of my favorite pan dulces which just goes to show that looks can be deceiving. 
Now, one of the reasons why we folded them to look kind of like little neckties is so they can be fully supported in the oven, so they can stand up on their own, right? Because I actually did a few test runs using different types of puff pastries uh, or pie crusts uh, that were store-bought. The results were bad because um, the puff pastry was way too salty for the sweet bread. And um, that didn't work out. The pie crust was way too weak. Yeah, this guy just completely broke up. Honestly, the best thing you can do is just make the exterior crust yourself. It'll take you a, maybe a few minutes, maybe an hour to make, but it is worth it. And it is really not that much more work. Okay, so I have finished coating all of the rings with butter and sugar, and they are actually looking pretty good. One thing that uh, you might want to consider is lining your baking sheets with parchment paper. So that way, once you're finished baking, easy cleanup. All you have to do is throw away the parchment paper. That's the oven, 380 degrees. Make sure that it is warming up. So that way, when once we finish making the batter for uh, the rings, the oven will be nice and warm and will be ready to go, okay? So I'm gonna put these right here for now and we're gonna start working on our batter and we're gonna mix in the wet ingredients first. So I've got my milk, la leche. You know, in Spain, when you want to tell somebody that they're super cool, you say, eres la leche. Uh, in Mexico, though, that doesn't make any sense. But hey, it's another expression you get to know. Oil, aceite. And, of course, los dos huevos. It's funky how the milk looks in there. Like bubbles. I got some egg shell. Fuera. And now the other egg. Muy bien. And la vainilla. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to whisk these together. See? Until it looks like just one liquid mix. Batiendo, bate que bate, chocolate. I always confuse that song with a mayonesa song. If you haven't heard either of those, uh, you need to go look them up on YouTube right away. They were both big hits back in my day. I danced to both of those songs many a times in many a quinceañera. Turns out that the song I was singing Chocolate is the same one as mayonesa, so it's actually both. Okay, see how it looks like just one mix? That means that this is ready. Now, in my other bowl, I am going to mix the dry ingredients. So, la harina, plus, in you go baking powder and the salt sal and el azúcar and we're going to mix these up a little bit mix them around whisk them around and now that i have both my wet and my dry ingredients mixed i'm going to pour my wet ingredients into the dry ingredients Little by little, despacito. despacito. And it goes. And in it went. <laughs> All right, let's make sure we whisk this around. 
and we want to get rid of all the little flower balls that might be in there, right? So that it looks like one smooth mixture. I'm fighting the urge to dip my finger in and taste it, but I'm already sure it's going to be amazing. All right, see how it ribbons? Que bonito. Oof, mira. Perfecto. I'm going to get my ladle. You might be tempted to fill these all the way up. Don't do that. I did that the first time I made these and it was just like Explosion Town USA in the oven because they are going to rise and they just spilled over. It was a mess. Resist the urge. Just fill it halfway. Okay. Uh, so here we're going to start off with ring number one. That might be a bit much. Let's hope it doesn't overflow. Ring number two. Okay. Ring number three. Okay. Ring number four. Halfway. I think that's a lot. We'll see how it turns out. It's too much. It's going to overflow. Ah! I'm going to fill up the last four ones and uh, I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay, so I've filled all of them up. I do think I may have filled up one or two over the halfway mark. So again, pray that it doesn't overflow. And if it does, again, no big deal. Um, we did have some batter left over, so I just put it in a little cake tin so that we will have an extra little cake for freezing. You can actually freeze these in that way if one day you have like the midnight munchies, you can sneak into the fridge, take out the cake and chomp away. All right, let's put these into the oven. It is at 380 and we're going to put it in there for 30 minutes. Uno, dos. Ah, I almost forgot this guy. All set. I'll see you in 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes and these guys are ready to come out of the oven. Let's see how they look. They smell amazing. Ooh. They are adorable. Yes, we are adorable. Batch number two. <laughs> Batch two. <laughs> and of course, our little bonus cake. It was pretty cute too. Not as cute as me. All right. <laughs> so that's it. That's how we make ojos de buey. Uh, bullseyes. Now, in other parts of Mexico, they're also called uh, nidos, which means nests. Uh, so yeah, depending on what part of Mexico you, you're visiting, you'll either hear them called ojos de boy, which means eyes of bulls, or ojos de pancha, which are Francis's eyes, or they're calm nests. In any case, I can't wait to try these because they look amazing. They're going to be fantastic. It's still too hot. Oof, I just love happy endings. The perfect marriage. Pies and cake in the center. All right, I'll see you in the next baking video and good luck, happy baking. What do I think of this recipe? I think we hit the bullseye. <laughs> what do I think of this recipe? I really think we hit the target, as in bullseye. <laughs> <laughs>